Awesome. Again, Global One has been in the air uh, throughout the morning. Pauline Higgins and crew, I believe we're going to bring up a shot here. Of, you can see, again, just the size of the damage that you're seeing there. Just unbelievable, the amount of water. Uh, Pauline, I don't know if you can hear me right now. Just trying to get a perspective of where exactly you are and what you're seeing. I can hear you, Scott, and we're flying over Bone S right now, taking a look at the devastation. Many homes uh, have completely lost their backyards. They are washed out. We're seeing roads washed out. Shuldice Park is affected by this. Uh, it is creeping on to where those football fields are. Uh, absolutely devastating. We were just down in Turner Valley in Black Diamond, where the river has washed out and collapsed several bridges and roads. Uh, lots of uh, bad weather coming in from the west as well. You can see that in this shot so unfortunately it does not look like we're seeing any signs of this letting up as we are flying in rain right now over Bones Park where we are seeing absolute devastation and an unbelievable amount of water. Pauline I don't know from your perspective because you're pretty high up and obviously there's a bit of cloud cover are you seeing anybody on the ground in terms of either vehicles or people stuck or people being rescued what are you seeing in terms of activity? When we were in High River, there were several helicopters circling High River uh, trying to rescue the few people that were still there. I do know that they were making the same efforts all day yesterday in High River, so it uh, looked like lots of people were safe and sound. What we're seeing here inside the city is quite a few people walking around trying to take a look at the devastation. We were just flying above Highway 8 near the Discovery Ridge area, and Highway 8 was aligned with vehicles on either side, and people were walking around trying to make their way down towards the river. Um, of course, this is so dangerous. You need to stay away from the river. Uh, please stay home. We're seeing Starcy Trail backed up right now all the way to Glenmore from 16th Avenue. People are out and about, and I'm just not sure why. But that's just it, Pauline. People are being urged to stay home. From up uh, at your perspective, from where we are, it kind of looks like there might be a sheen on some of the roads. It's hard to tell where the river actually stops. But by your indication, how far would you say that the river is moving inland in terms of how many city blocks perhaps it's covering? Well, Amber, it is kind of hard to tell fighting this cloud cover up here, but the river has definitely expanded in width. I don't want to say doubled, but uh, if I do say that, I don't think I would be too far off. Uh, it is hard to tell in some areas, like Discovery Ridge, backyards are flooded, and then uh, roads are very, very wet in that area. So they may not be wet from the river, but the rain that we're seeing fall in this area is affecting the roads as well. Unbelievable images, Pauline. Uh, from your own perspective, having, you know, covering the city and the streets and our roadways day to day, uh, just give us a, a sense of how you're feeling and how it, how it is to identify traditional landmarks along the rivers. It is incredible how much this amount of water can change the perspective from up here in the air. The river is so wide and it is so dark and murky as you can see here, making it very hard to see really where the river ends and where the bank begins. Many banks we saw have collapsed even within the city here. We've seen trees knocked over by the water and trees completely submerged in the river. Uh, definitely an impact on the roads as well as I mentioned. Very busy. We'll give you a quick look at Croce Child here. We're flying over Crow Child and Bow Trail. It is closed uh, at Bow, at least as you head northbound. Those vehicles headed towards the bottom of your screen, and you can see a long line of vehicles trying to make their way up Crow Child. It's right now backed up from just north of 33rd Avenue to Bow Trail, and they are not moving. So if you do plan on leaving your house, you're going to be stuck in gridlock in the routes that are open as uh, this water is spilling onto the road all over the city. Pauline, we were talking earlier about first responders, uh, police, uh, fire crews out there. Are you seeing a lot of signs of emergency crews in our city? Yes, a lot of emergency crews. We're seeing helicopters fly up and down the banks of the river just to make sure that there's no power lines that have fallen, things like that. And we are seeing a ton of emergency crews all over the city. The less people that are on the road, the easier it is for those emergency crews to work. So please keep that in mind today, that if you do stay home, you're doing nothing but helping the emergency crews help the people that really need it.
Pauline, from your perspective, does it seem as though people are heeding that message? It does look for the most part like volume is pretty light, but do you think that is the same? Sorry, Amber, I've lost you. Oh, having a little bit of problems getting through to Pauline just because of the transmission, low-lying cloud. But Pauline, are you getting the sense from your perspective that people are, are actually listening and staying home? Well, I'm disappointed to see how many vehicles are on the road. Uh, Crowchild Trail's busy, Sarcee's busy. We're making our way towards Deerfoot now, which appears to have quite a bit of volume on it. So I, I'm sorry to say it doesn't look like people are staying home. Uh, here's a quick look, Amber. I just want to explain what we're flying over now. Uh, we're just on the north side of downtown, taking a look between Center Street and the Peace Bridge. And you can see Memorial is completely washed out here. There is no road. It almost looks like another river. Uh, Eau Claire is completely underwater. That's what else you're seeing in this shot. There is an unbelievable amount of water coming out of the river and spilling onto our roadways and our parks and our communities. And does it look like, Pauline, that the uh, you mentioned you're disappointed because it does look like people are out and about and trying to make their way around the city. Does it look like the worst of the traffic is on the outside? You mentioned Deerfoot, which you're heading to now. Uh, what is the situation over there? It's quite slow on Deerfoot Trail. I'm just taking a look uh, right around Memorial. Uh, Deerfoot doesn't look too bad. What's the busiest from what we've seen is Crowchild and Sarcee. So those folks that are trying to make their way from the south side of the river north towards the river. Of course, the problems are on the bridges over the river, which is what's causing all the gridlock. It, it, there are a lot of people on the road. 16th Ave, I can see out my window now. It appears to be quite busy as well. Pauline, if you could, could you give us a sense of what the scene is on Prince's Island? Uh, we had heard that there was widespread flooding over the entire ground there. Is that what you're seeing? I mean, that island is home to a concert venue. It's home to a restaurant. What is the status of those? That is definitely what I'm seeing here. We're taking a look at where... We're taking a look at uh, where Eau Claire holds its festivities over the summer, like the Folk Fest, and it is completely underwater right now. The stage, the land, the island, everything. We're going to try to make our way towards the zoo next and see how it's faring in this river. But with its close uh, perimeter towards the river, I, I can only imagine that it's underwater as well. And Pauline, that's the community of Sunnyside there that you're over top of as well. Give us a picture as to how bad the damage is there. Well, the closer you are to the river, the worse it is. Uh, we're not seeing sunny side too bad right now. Not seeing a lot of the river uh, uh, flowing into this community, but definitely some places that are a bit washed out. Memorial is getting it really bad. Memorial almost underwater. I'll give you a look at that now. Yeah, it's interesting, Pauline, because if, it may be from our angle. It's hard to tell the distance of the water uh, under the bridges, but it even looked like the Peace Bridge of the water has come up over the last couple of hours. When we were talking to Gary Bobovitz earlier, there did look like there's a little more space in uh, some of the bridges around the city, but it's starting to look like it's the Peace Bridge almost looks like it's uh, being touched by the water. It definitely is, Scott. Uh, as far as the Center Street Bridge goes, the under deck is completely underwater right now. I will give you a look at that as we follow the river east from the downtown. Here you can see gridlock on the bridge itself, and the under bridge is, is almost underwater. The, the levels of the river is just unbelievable. It cannot be very safe to be on those bridges at this time. No, an important message again to drive home to people today. So many people have been calling into our newsroom wanting to know how they can help. And at this point, the message is stay home. Simply stay off our roadways, stay off our pathways, stay away from anywhere near the river and the waterways because it is so dangerous. And as time goes on and the water begins to recede, that's when I think we'll really start to see the, the, the need for help and the need for people to volunteer their time. But at this point, we really want to to pass along the message from the mayor, from the premier, and that is for people to stay home and stay away from the water. And the mayor is saying he understands the motivation why people want to be a part mm -hmm. of this. It is your city, and of course, uh, you know, you want to see what's happening and you want to help. But right now, the concern is, is that people who are taking in the spectacle and the disaster this is, that you could create another accident or another tragedy, God forbid, and right now the emergency crews are already stretched as they're dealing with the situation at hand and we don't want a situation 
where you're adding to the trouble we're already seeing around our city and in other towns. No, Pauline giving us a great perspective there of people on the pathway right beside the river. Those uh, river banks are so, so unstable right now oh, and yeah. they have eroded so much and we really don't know what the integrity is of even pathways like that that do have cement supports. We don't know the integrity of the bridges. At this point, we just, it's really too hard to say what the full scale of the disaster is. So stay away, please, so that emergency crews aren't called away from other matters you. to rescue you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's traffic heading out of downtown, eh? Yes, people wow. trying to get out of uh, get out of town. There's a little bit of unreality with the whole thing, too. Like you think, oh, no, really, I can just go about my business. But Absolutely. clearly you, you cannot bet. go about your business. Interesting to see uh, how much traffic there is out there. Mm -hmm. Where, what are we doing that's so important? We heard from Pauline saying we're, that, you know. You know what I mean? Yeah, she's disappointed in, in that. Yeah, she's when there's been so there many stay, you know, non emergency uh, travel, uh, just stay home, just stay home, just stay home. Yeah. Well, you know. I think you nailed it, though. I think people sometimes get a perspective of, you know, not me. It's, yeah. it's not going to happen to yeah. me. Uh, I can handle this. I've been through worse. Yeah. And, and again, I think that this happened so quickly, it was hard to sort of get a, a huge scope of. Yeah really what was going on in the city. I mean, you look 24 hours ago, it was Canmore's problem. Yes, And that's where the focus was. And then all of a sudden, it just kept moving and moving and moving. And all, you know, we're up in Global One, and you look out and you go, oh my gosh. We were on our way to soccer last night when, when Hawk 2 came overhead and said, get out, get out. And I'm like, mm, shall we go to soccer? Hmm. Like, no, no one you're even this. considering that. No. And it just keeps going, just keeps going. And you can see everywhere you look at the water, uh, onto the roads, onto the yards, onto the homes, onto. And so many people uh, continuing to tweet and to, to email, what can we do to help? And the word today, right now from the mayor is, please just stay home. Yes. That's what you can do to help. And then we'll let you know. Give us some time to regroup. Give us some time to get a, a, an idea of the situation. But right now, don't head out to try and help people because that's not going to help. We're going to go back up to Pauline Higgins for more perspective as to what she's seeing. Pauline, it looks as though you're further south on the cloud trail through the Mission region. Yes, Amber, we just made our way around the downtown core and then south along McLeod. Uh, it is incredible. McLeod Trail is completely underwater right now. We're currently taking a look at Stampede Park. You can see it, too. Uh, it's all underwater. They already have some tents set up like Nashville North for the Stampede, and it's getting water damage. Definitely is. Uh, downtown region, is it's just devastated. We're fl flying along the L or the river now, and you can see that there's a school and the playground under water trees are washed out we're seeing some vehicles in the water uh, extensive damage around the downtown core especially along the river banks unbelievable what we're watching right now and just going back to Leslie's point of how quickly this Mm -hmm. came upon people mm -hmm. and I remember during the six last night when Gore Gillies was talking about 75,000 to 100,000 people were on evacuation mm -hmm. alert and when that register that's, when that uh, number just kicked in it seemed to that's where the penny dropped yeah. on what we're really dealing with here and now you're seeing the scope of it from an unbelievable mm -hmm. perspective from Pauline Higgins up in Global One. And emergency crews were so busy last night trying to build those berms along the Elbow River to protect the community of Mission. Unfortunately, the force of Mother Nature is just extreme. And we've seen just the, the amount of damage that can be caused in such a short amount of time. This is uh, near Lindsay Park, and it does look as though the bridge through Memorial, or sorry, along um, McLeod? McLeod, is now covered in water. Yep. Yeah, Absolutely McLeod has covered. been, hey, the closer you get to downtown, we've been hearing that McLeod um, is a no-go, that it's been flooded, and now we're hearing more about, and look at the rain coming down now. Yeah. Hey? So more rain coming down now. And there is further into downtown, so you can see, just impassable. How are we going to get a parade out of this? But as Nancy says. We will. We will. We're Calgarians. Because we will make it happen. You know, it was a little disconcerting, i got to tell you, a few minutes ago when she was flying over Bonas. Was a little disconcerting to see all that water and if thinking, you, yeah. Ooh. If you missed it, our own family member here, Leslie Horton, had to evacuate her home. Well, the water was kissing uh, my house two hours ago. So I haven't checked. I haven't had any updates. Probably better that way. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you know what? What am I going to do from here? Oh, and there's the flyover. You can see. So Fifth Avenue flyover out of downtown. You can still get out of downtown. You yes. can't get in to downtown right now. No. We're headed towards the zoo now, further down the Bow River. Uh, let's go back to Pauline Higgins, if we can. Uh, is that 
doable? Pauline, give us a sense of Lost what my you're audio, seeing but this is a zoo at the zoo. Listening. We're listening. You go ahead. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Sorry, it's it's quite the job being up here fighting this wind and rain, uh, but we're flying above the zoo now, taking a look, and it, it is completely submerged. I am so sad to see this. Glad to hear they evacuated some of those animals before it got to this level. You can see this bridge. The water is rising. Uh, just behind us on McLeod Trail, the bridge right around Stampede Park, completely submerged in water, and water is flowing over top of the river. Uh, there is just an incredible incredible amount of water all around downtown right now. Jordan Witzel, our meteorologist, sitting here on the desk with us as we watch these images. Leslie pointed out we saw some raindrops uh, hitting the camera lens there on Global One. What are we looking at here? Are we going to see a bit of a breather? Ooh, look at Memorial Wait, you, there. Oh. Yeah. It has been totally covered. That is so just a areas. little bit to the east of Center Street. Yeah. What you have remarked about earlier, Scott, was, uh, okay, all right, we're flooded, we peaked, that's it, right? The worst part of this is it's still raining. Now it's raining in the city, but if you think, as Pauline exclaimed, there's the rain and the wind that's hard to pilot against, it's even harder driving wind and rain to the west of the city. And that's worse because the further upstream it falls, the more locations have to deal with this as potential further peaking of the streams. So that is what's taking place. It is raining. Uh, I can show you that if we cut to uh, the live radar right now briefly, you can at least get a sense of where the heavy rains are. And more than anything, understand uh, that it isn't just uh, what we're hmm. seeing as, you know, usual color coding is, yeah, yellow is the heaviest, right? And then green gets a little bit lighter. Just to describe this to you, don't underestimate this. It's all should be appearing in yellows and reds. It's all heavy rain, just the way radar indicates. The heaviest rain that's closest to the radar blocks the radar beam so it can't read the rest further to the west it's heavy out there to sum it up and it's falling heavily right through to the evening and it's angry it is angry it is. We were talking about how Pauline would not usually be up in Global One in these types of circumstances, simply because of the low cloud cover, the strong winds, the pounding rain, and you can see that on her lens right now. Mm -hmm. These are not flying conditions, nope. typically. Nope. Nope. They're up there because this is an unusual situation. They are bucking Just the wind. They're bucking scary. some rain. A little bit scary, yeah, we yeah. feel for you. Of course, it's a little bit scary. <laughs> I'm shocked, Pauline, to see Memorial so devastated there. Wow. Memorial and the downtown, it is absolutely devastating. And uh, the weather that Jordan was just talking about, we can see it to the west. We Well, we can't see to the west at all because of how thick the cloud cover is uh, and how dense those clouds are and dark, just doom and gloom out here. And uh, it's no different on the streets, unfortunately. Uh, Pauline, from our perspective, it looks like uh, much of downtown, uh, some of these streets completely covered in water, yet we're seeing traffic. Any indication, I mean, I would hope those are emergency vehicles, but I doubt it. No. Um, where are these people finding a way through the city? You know what, I, I think because there's a limited a number of emergency services available and because they are trying to deal with some of the bigger issues, they're not able to block all of the little side streets. We're flying over downtown right now and I can see some people are using just those tiny little routes that aren't uh, normally used so that they can maneuver their way in and out of downtown. But as you can see as we fly over the East Village, it's completely submerged in water. It is not safe to be on the roads right now. It is not smart to put your vehicle through all this mucky water that has debris floating in it uh, from how fast the river has been flowing. It, it's just, you really, really need to stay home and we're just not seeing that right now, which is really unfortunate. Pauline, I'm not sure if you can, but if you could give us kind of a zoom in back towards the East Village, there is a construction site there. They are building high-rise condominiums, and so they have dug way, way down deep to build the foundation. You can see a crane there. Mm -hmm. That is a huge pit. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, that goes down several stories, and it is filled with water. Yep. It's, uh, it's nearing the top. Uh, mm -hmm. Simply a huge pit of water. There she is zooming in for us. That's a construction site and the water just keeps pouring in. It's, it's amazing. And it's dirty, fast-moving water. Full of debris. We don't well, know Yeah, you don't even there. know what's floating in there, right? No. That's a really good point, Amber. And that gives added power to the power of the water. It can take even more stuff out as it rushes through if you've got trees and logs and rocks. And Well, Jordan was mentioning that earlier when you looked at some of the shots downtown. You could see from 
Pauline shot, the currents and yep. the swirling that's going on, yeah. but you're saying down on the ground, you don't really recognize that. And water that may only be not even up to your knee, you think, oh, fun and games, I can make my way through here to check out the action, but that can be really dangerous. It's all the force behind it, right? There's all that water behind it working together as one unit to really create a kind of a hydraulic system that has the force to push, push cars that weigh well into the three, four ton weight class. So mm -hmm. it has power. Water has amazing power to do that. Uh, so see, yeah, don't try and cross roads that are covered in water. And as Pauline mentioned, I mean, sure, there are people that may have found themselves down there in an hour, like, okay, I got to get out of town, and, uh, and that's the idea. But for those watching, don't go down. Don't be curious oh, anywhere McLeod's where this yeah. is. Uh, you do head in, and you don't know how water is going to act and react, and suddenly you might be trying to maneuver yourself through some of those side streets and everything's blocked off and you're surrounded by water. It's not a great idea. You were talking before too, Jordan, about flash flooding. Mm -hmm. Not so much here in the city, but in rural areas, that is a real cause for concern as well. We've seen emergency alerts go out from the province as well, warning people about that. Give us the perspective there because this is a very dangerous problem. Right, you ex you know where to expect river runoff, right? There's the river system and then it floods, peaks its banks, and we've got the overflow like we have in many areas. Then you start to get, especially with the downpours in the foothills now, water reacts and finds the, the least uh, area of resistance to flow and to run. And now that there's resistance where water is flowing and flooding, it's finding new paths, places you wouldn't expect to see runoff places where water will work uphill to then flow downhill actually tends to be of less resistance. So that's where the flush flooding occurs. We have a lot of areas around the province that would be prone to flash flooding, especially with the saturation we're seeing from what we had was the late May above average rainfall, mm -hmm. June, which was pretty average so far until now. Now we've exceeded it. But just that amount of rainfall earlier this spring has, has everything's runoff. Perfect storm situations. Yes. With a, with a without getting a perfect storm. No. It's interesting, we're getting some tweets and emails, people wanting to have you know specific questions uh, for our meteorologists and for Leslie in terms of traffic, asking which roads are mm -hmm. closed and how far is, is say, Glenmore closed. Mm -hmm. or And at this point, really, it doesn't matter. No, mm -hmm. no. There's no point if, if one of the uh, main roadways is open partially, there's no point in getting out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, like Jordan mentioned, if you're out there and you gotta get home, you gotta do what you gotta do at the safest way possible. But at this point, it doesn't matter how which roads are open partially. No, it doesn't. And, and this really, I think, will let the tail sink in. These shots from Global One up there will really tell you that where are you going? What are you doing? It's just not that important. Only emergency travel. Otherwise, you need to stay far away from anywhere to do with the river. Stay home. Even uh, if you don't live anywhere near water, stay home. Keep those emergency or keep the roads clear for emergency responders. They've got the job here. They've got the tough job. They're trying to evacuate people. They're trying to keep them off the roads. They're trying to get the people that need to get to hospital. So the rest of us really need to just stay off the roads and stay out of trouble. Pauline's continuing to show us images from Global One, kind of taking us on a field trip, if you will, up the Elbow River. And we're looking at so much property damage. It is extensive. This is uh, presumably a home, uh, perhaps a golf course. golf course. It is a golf yep. course. Pauline is back with us. Pauline, give us uh, another uh, a, a glimpse of what you're seeing. Well, we're flying down the river right now, making our way towards the Glenmore Reservoir, just over it, and the damage is definitely extensive and just devastating. The power of this water is incredible. We've seen it knock out trees. We've seen it take small buildings with it, vehicles completely submerged. Uh, there's just so much water everywhere. So, yes, stay home and let us be up here in Global One to give you shots. We'll show you everything that you want to see from the comfort and safety of your home. <laughs> For well, sure. you get to put up with the wind <laughs> and the rain, Pauline, but we appreciate what you guys are going through. And I know that is a piece of flying that your pilot is doing for us this morning, flying in these really difficult conditions. Take a look at that. Hey, yeah. wow, talk about angry water. This is the Glenmore Reservoir that you're looking at. And earlier from Jamie, we had heard that they were going to release water from the Kananaskas Dam as well as the Ghost Dam further upstream on the Bow River. This is the Elbow River and just the fury of the water and the force of the water. We saw images from Lethbridge where there too they released water upstream of the Old Man Dam and the impact of the water coming through the, uh, the, the, the dam was just incredible. It's, it's such 
force. Mother Nature has such force and it's unfortunate that we are seeing it to the extent that we are. And we live with these rivers and we appreciate yeah. them and we say, like, you know, lovely, we love to live beside the bow and the elbow rivers. And this is one of those situations where the river, this, this is what happens. Can you I, know, this is the reality of the situation is the force yeah. of, of Mother Nature. I'll say this, living in Manitoba for eight years, this was expected every year. Now we know this is well beyond what we would ever see here. This is, well, I'm working on the data to figure out exactly what type of one in 100, one in 500 year flood this is. I've been through floods in Manitoba, forecasting, watching it unfold, watching it unfold slowly and expectedly with where mm. you wouldn't farm fields in a floodplain. Right. This is unbelievable, the scene we're seeing here with this type of force just from rainfall. You have to think in the prairies how great it is that it's ice damming and collection of snow over many months to melt. This is, this is saturation over a few weeks of rainfall. And we've heard people make reference to the flood of 2005, which mm -hmm. of course caused extensive damage in the city of Calgary and other areas right across southern Alberta. It was a really dire picture. Uh, I believe it was back in 1995. They called that the flood of the century in southern Alberta. And they're saying that water levels now on many waterways are just as bad. Sioux Bridge, I think, right there, right? Yeah. To St. George's Island yes. there. We've been getting a lot of phone calls, emails, uh, messages on Twitter about a few things that sort of reoccurring themes. Uh, the major ones, people want to know what they can do and how they can help mm -hmm. out. And again, uh, Leslie was talking about it. Gordon Gillies ran in here as well, uh, saying, "Stay home. Stay home. Yeah, mm -hmm. there, that's how you no can help." There's no getting out there today. That that's is where active we're at today. helping. You got it. Yes. Uh, if you do want, if you have a lot of more questions, if you want to get more engaged, you can go to our website, globalnews.ca slash Calgary. We have a live blog going there, and we have uh, people working in the newsroom right now. We'll take your questions and help guide you in any way we can. Also, another question, people wondering about the water. At this point, there's no boil water advisory out there, so that is another question that people seem to be wanting to know. Although that could change at any moment, and we'll keep you up to date as we can. We well, you know, you're looking at Deerfoot there. Sorry, Amber. Is that Deerfoot right near Burnco? Mm hmm. It looks like Deerfoot, it Deerfoot right by Burnco. Yes, it's Deerfoot is very busy and we're seeing people pulled over on the side of Deerfoot Trail taking pictures of the river. Mm. This is one of the most dangerous things you can do. Do <laughs> not pull over on the side of Deerfoot Trail. Please, please do not do this. Yeah, no kidding. You can see how close it is. There are lane restrictions um, around Southland, around the Caffro Bridge because of the, look how high the water is. Mm. It's lapping onto the road. Yeah, lots of looky-loo action. Gosh, that is Let's just treat it like situation. stopping and trying to feed a bear out of your window. Yeah. You wouldn't do that. No, you wouldn't Don't do, do that. This. But no. some people do, unfortunately. And we're seeing it. Yeah. Uh, we did have the Premier here earlier this morning. We had a press conference with her at 9 o'clock, as well as with other provincial officials, City of Calgary officials as well. She said she was going to continue her tour of the devastated areas, heading to Lethbridge, High River, as well as Canmore. I just saw a tweet from the Prime Minister office. Prime Minister Stephen Harper also en route to our city to tour flood damage not only here but presumably across southern Alberta as we are not the only area affected. I just got a text message from one of our reporters, Tracy Nagai, and she's talking about lineups at uh, Home Depot in the southeast. So people mm -hmm. going in for supplies and oh, water. Yeah, yeah. So again you're gonna have this uh, people taking chances, going mm -hmm. out there trying to get supplies. I mean I get it. You need what you need, uh, but now is not the time. You'd hope you'd have something at home. Again, your tap water at this point in the city is fine. Unless you're in an evacuated area, they've yeah, shut that right. off for you, right? They've shut off the gas. They it. do it, so you don't have to worry about it. If right. you're in an evacuated area, the utilities will be shut off for you, so don't worry about that. And it's important to know there are 25 different neighborhoods in this city that have been evacuated. We really want you to go to our website, globalnews.ca slash Calgary. It is there that you can find the full list of areas affected. You can find a list of roadways that have also been impacted by the flooding. And we have a live blog there as well. So if you do have questions, things that you're unsure of as, as your community is shut down, we can help you. Our reporters are there. We are live blogging, answering any and all questions that come in. So please go to globalnews.ca slash Calgary. A lot of information there. Video, pictures, up-to-date information as we just continue to watch this change. And it is. It's changing so And it does so continue quickly. to change. Sure. All, just so you know, you have one breakthrough and all of a sudden you've got another road closed. Boom. There you're done. And you know, that's another reason to stay home. You could be out and about thinking you're good. Make your trip to, <clears throat> excuse me, Home Depot. And then you come back and you find that you can't get back into your community because your roads 
been washed out and when the water is this high <laughs> could happen on, uh, so quickly. And that's what we've heard from a lot of people. There was no warning. We heard from the uh, community of Redwood Meadows this morning, Rob Evans, the fire chief there, and he said that so many people have said that about the Elbow River. You, you know, yesterday morning it rose so suddenly, it went over the berm that they thought would protect so many homes, but the water levels rose so fast, and in a lot of cases there just wasn't enough time for people to get out. We've seen helicopters still picking stragglers up in High River, people who have been left behind because of the flood situation there. Just not enough time to get out. What are we looking at now? Just this situation. That's Deerfoot again. That's around. that's right around Burn Co. Yeah, we're just okay. uh, Pauline is just a uh, shot over to the other side. So of just it. north of Meadows, basically. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're right in that area. And it's, again, a lot of people. And we've been hearing this reports that there was a lot of people uh, stopped on the side of Deerfoot to take the pictures. And Pauline, you're really seeing that with people uh, stopped right on Deerfoot. Bad idea. I am. Uh, we've seen them stopped along Deerfoot. We've seen them stopped along Highway 8. We've seen them stopped on the Center Street Bridge. Even being as daring as walking onto the walkways right along the river in the downtown area, which is completely flooded. This is just so dangerous. If you are at home, good. If you're not at home, phone your, or phone your friends that aren't at home. Tell them to come home. Watch Global News. We have full coverage from the sky. We will show you what it looks like uh, so you don't have to be out and about. The only people that should be on the roads are the emergency responders that are out to help people. You can see here in this shot that the river has completely flooded the areas around it. Here's a look at a pedestrian bridge that uh, the river is just barely making it underneath. We saw McLeod Trail, the bridge uh, making its way past Stampede Park is completely underwater, just being saturated in that water. There is a lot of water and more to come as we're looking to the west and seeing a lot of cloud cover, heavy, dense black cloud cover and rain. That is the truth. Jordan has been saying that all morning long. We are in for mm -hmm. more moisture. This isn't ending. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, it's it definitely hitting a second or should I say even a third wave of rain right now. Heavy rainfall to the west of the city in the foothills. As of yesterday evening, areas in the foothills saw between 120 and 150 millimeters of rain. These are the same areas now that are getting uh, hammered with more rain, and you can see it's becoming more widespread in the city of Calgary as well. Heavy to the north, heavy to the northeast, but really the concern is the watershed to the, uh, to the west, and that's where you almost get hit with less of a warning, less of an anticipation when it's a falling rain in the hills and in the mountains because it's going to flow downhill a lot quicker and it definitely has a heavy rain we're seeing on live radar and uh, even through the windows of Global One uh, is falling and only adding to a delayed peak, should I say, or an increased peak. Provincial and uh, city officials earlier in their announcements, in their um, press conference, said that the bow was at 1,500 uh, cubic meters per second, the elbow at 650 cubic meters per second. I would expect to, I would agree with what they anticipated as uh, the bow possibly getting up to 2,000 cubic meters per second uh, by the end of today or into tomorrow morning. We're looking at rain ending this evening tonight, or at least getting light enough to slowly move on. So I would suggest uh, that even into tomorrow morning is when we're finally going to see a peak in all of this. Jordan, you mentioned there how much ca water capacity is moving down our rivers. I just want to mention quickly, uh, Vulcan County also issuing an alert earlier this morning. They're saying that elevated water levels, not only in the Bow, but also the Little Bow Rivers, which flow through their region, are continuing to rise. And as such, they are going to open the floodgates on the Twin Valley and the Travers Reservoirs. This is southeast of our city in through Vulcan County. And so they're asking people, again, stay away from the waterways as they release that water. The banks become so unstable because the rush of the water mm. flowing by it kicks up debris it takes down trees and so you don't know what's really going by what's really scraping those those banks and they collapse so easy when we see conditions like this so if you are anywhere near water in southern Alberta please stay away from those creeks and rivers Hey, Pauline, now you guys have been up for a couple of hours now. I know you were like getting up because of the weather. You uh, gave us some great shots from outside the city. You're inside the city now. You got you got any fuel? You guys doing okay up there for fuel? You need to refuel? You need to, do we need to release and let you land here? We can't Can you get through a drive-thru? And do you have to go to the bathroom? <laughs>
Leslie, you are reading my mind. All this water is definitely uh, making me need a bathroom break. <laughs> and we do need some fuel. We're actually running very low. So I think we're going to make our way in towards the airport now, grab some fuel, and then we'll get back up in the air Great. and continue our coverage from the sky. Great, Pauline. Uh, you have a bathroom break. Maybe grab a glass of water. Well, no, because then you'll have to have a bathroom <laughs> yeah, break I'll again. And you're in a chopper. Not a good idea. <laughs> you're in the chopper, and we will catch up with you guys. Uh, great to get those shots from over the city. And again, Pauline and her crew, they were not allowed over the city until just over the last uh, half hour or so, and that's why we're just getting these shots. Thanks. Just above in the shot there, we're seeing a lot of volume. What are we looking at that's here? That's Deerfoot. Th that is Deerfoot. Mm, at Glenmore. And is that just volume, Pauline? Can you tell from up there where the traffic there on Deerfoot? Is that people... Looky loo action. Yeah, I think you get a little bit down? of yeah, you get a little bit of the looky loo action. People off, but there's also lane restrictions through here, Scott. Gotcha. And also exits uh, restrictions mm -hmm. blocked through off through here. Yeah, exits are blocked off. So it's a crapshoot. You know what? You head out onto a route. It's a crapshoot. They're changing on a dime. So just uh, again, uh, actively helping today is staying home yeah. and staying off the roads. We just got another email into our Global Calgary newsroom saying, "How can I help?" Please don't go outside. Stay mm. off the roads. We've heard from the mayor saying at this point we're asking people not to leave their homes. Mm -hmm. And again, you can go to our website, globalnews.ca slash Calgary. We have a live blog going. Our newsroom is working nonstop right now to answer any questions you have. So you can go there and join the conversation and get some of your questions answered through our website, globalnews.ca slash Calgary. We just had a, a shot of the Saddle Dome. You know they're uh, flooded up to row 10 now. Are Saddle. you serious? Yeah. There were reports yeah, of that. Yeah, we saw a tweet were, about that yeah, earlier. There were reports of that, several yes. reports of that. We're working on confirmation for that because that would just be uh, another Look at the, look at the grounds issue. just underwater down there. Yeah. And it's they, interesting, like you were sure. saying, about how everything's changing on a dime and you don't know, you, you head out on the road, you shouldn't, but you're out there and you don't know which roads are going to be closed and what's going to happen next. And Jordan, you were talking to the point of the rivers and the overflowing in terms of finding the least resistance. Right. And it can be in any direction. Unpredictable. It can be uphill because it's just the easiest way for that rush of water to work around where water already exists. And so it's going to find many different routes now. It's unpredictable. You might think you're safe going down one road, uh, you know, even to a neighbor's house. Oh, let's watch a movie and just spend the day indoors. <sighs> Not a good idea, especially if you're in lower lying areas of the city and, and increasingly higher elevations uh, in and around the downtown core and even extending areas now. Look at the rain in the north part of the city, hey? Well, they're, they're, they're heading back to the airport to, to refuel. And it is, looks like we're getting some more, mm -hmm. some more rain there. The mast. I guess it's not the mast cam, the, the tail, tail cam, the, tail cam. the <laughs> rotor cam. Yeah, the rotor cam. <laughs> what do we call it as we go into our six on the air? We can call it whatever we want. We're just going to probably start losing <laughs> transmission from Pauline as they get closer to their landing yes. pad. It'll start to break up a bit. We're happy to have Pauline and the Global One crew, though, up in the air for us. They are refueling, and they're going to take a bit of a break before heading back up into the air, and it will be then that we will continue to provide you with those aerial shots of the widespread devastation throughout our city and throughout southern Alberta. Stay with us.